Is that a blessing? Is that a blessing? Mr. Beach wants to let everyone here at Siloam know that she is thinking about you. She is, she's praying for you, and she's thankful for the prayers and the cards. And most important, just as importantly, she is so thankful that we are carrying on the, the baton, the mission, the commitment that she's had for so many years for Operation Christmas Child. And so from the bottom of her heart, she wishes to thank you. But, but we wanted you to see, because sometimes seeing is better than hearing, she is doing extremely well. And we praise God for that. Amen? Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. At this time, we'll have our opening scripture and prayer by Deacon Barry. Hallelujah. And we ask that you would pay especially close attention to him as he comes. The word of the Lord. confidence in powerful people. Theirs is no hope for you there. There is no hope for you there. When they breathe their last, their last, they return to the earth, and all their plans die with them. But joyful are those who have the God of Israel as their helper, whose hope is in the Lord their God. He made heaven and earth, the sea, and everything in them. He keeps every promise forever, and he gives justice to the oppressed and food to the hungry. The Lord frees the prisoners. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are weighed down. The Lord loves the godly. The Lord protects the foreigners among us. He cares for the orphans and widows, but he frustrates the plans of the wicked. The Lord will reign forever. He will be your God, O Israel, throughout the generations. Praise ye the Lord. Amen? Amen. There's a word in there from 2,000 years ago, and I think there's a word in there for today. Amen. Lots of words, actually. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most heavenly and gracious Father, we just thank you in the name of Jesus for your word. We thank you for your encouragement, Father God. We thank you that you are attentive, even when we aren't, Father God, to those in need. Your word talks about the incarcerated, Father God. It talks about the foreigners, yea, even immigrants, Father God. Your word talks about those who are downtrodden and those who have been oppressed, Father God. You say that you will take care of every need that we have, Father God. And so we just thank you in the name of Jesus. Lord, I, pray, I praise you because you are a God who heals. You are a God who supplies. You are a God who encourages. You are a God who guides. You are a God who listens, Father God, when no one else will, will listen to us. Because you love us that much. We thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who comforts us and hears us even at the darkest moments in our lives and even in the happiest moments of our lives, Father God. And so, Lord, we just invite you into this house. We pray that your way be our way, Father God. We pray that you will be blessed and that we in kind will be blessed, Father God. We pray for the word that will be shared. We pray, Father God, for each person who is seated within this congregation. We pray for those who are, their families who are represented by them, Father. We pray for those who are listening to us on the internet, dear Lord. We pray that, Father, 
that every need that they have will be met. Every struggle that they have will be overcome. Every sorrow, Father God, will be encouraged and lift up and wiped away, Father. And those who are crying out for healing, for peace, for love, for encouragement, for fellowship, Father God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will supply their every need. And now, Father God, we say bless this place, bless this service as we take time out to rest and relax and pull back and give everything that we have to the worship of you. May, you way, may your way be had, Father God. May you be lifted up and may you be magnified and glorified in this brief time that we have together. And may we give you everything we have in love, Father God, and admiration to you because you so richly deserve it. Thank you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. We lift you up, Lord, and we magnify you, Lord. And we thank you for this time in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 And amen. Give the Lord a hand of praise. He is richly deserving of it. Is he not giving a hand of praise, folks? Come on now. You took all the time to come out here. Give him a hand of praise. Thank you.
He's our peace. These are just who he is. It's not what he's done. It's just his nature of who he is. It says, Psalm 22, I will tell of your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. We praise him for who he is. Yes, we praise him for the blessings. Yes, we praise him for the deliverance and the healing and the abundance of wealth. But, but without all of that, he's still worthy to be praised because he's God. He's the beginning and the end. He is the Lion of Judah. He's the Balm and Gilead. He's the Redeemer of our soul. He's the way man. He's the provider. He's the healer. It's just because of who you are, Lord, that we praise you, Lord, this morning. It's just because, oh Lord God, you are good. Because you're all powerful. Because you're all knowing. Because you heal to us to the uttermost, Lord. You give us peace in the middle of the chaos, Lord God. You give us hope, Lord God, when everything and everything tells us it's hopeless. That's who you are, oh God. And that is why we praise you. That is why we love you. Hallelujah. Just because of who you are, we worship you this morning, Lord.
to the Siloam Baptist Church. Amen. We love company here. Oh, I said I, we love company here. Yeah. 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 Once you stop by the house, yeah. you are family. Amen. So we just want to welcome those who are here for the very first time and welcome all of you in cyberspace Amen. to the Siloam Baptist Church. At this time, we will have a special announcement and appreciation by Deacon Scott. This appreciation, first giving honor and glory to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. One second. said, I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. That's what he told and led pastor here. But he also told the church, pay careful attention to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you. And he said in Ephesians, I give you the apostles, I give you the prophets, I give you evangelists, I give you shepherds and teachers. Hebrews told the church, obey your leaders, submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for that would be no advantage to you. I am a witness to Pastor and Sister West's not only love for this branch of Zion, but the love for each individual, each family, each ministry that he's toiled over the years to be a part of. is not an easy task to preach the word, to be ready in season, out of season, to reprove and rebuke sometimes your best friends with patience and teaching us. It says to us, let The 
elders or the pastor who rules over be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. This is an opportunity. This is not just Pastor Appreciation Day. It's Pastor Appreciation Month. And so through your tithes and offerings, we ask that sometime this month that you will send either a love offering or a note or a card or an email or a text or just walk up to Pastor and Sister West and let them know how much you appreciate them. Sometimes a kind word does more than anything else. Sometimes a hug, and I know, can make your day and it will carry you. Pastor lives for the gospel. He's not here in a form or fashion. He's not here for a paycheck. And I can witness that from when he first came here. Because we could not pay him. What Lincoln University was paying him. We could not do what the schools were doing for Sister West. That she had to transfer and move her whole life to this community and find a job. And God has blessed her to be part of our community and our school districts over the years. So, we should exalt our leaders, our leader. This has been a difficult year. Two years. 2019 was really the last time that we could give Pastor his due. So here we are in 2021. And so, I just want to thank you for your time and your attention. And Pastor, we love you. Sister West, we love you. Candace, we love you. Let's have a word of prayer. I lift up my eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help coming from the Lord, the creator of heaven and earth. The creator of this branch of Zion. <laughs> Father, we didn't know what we were going to do 28 years ago. We went three years lost in the wilderness. But you sent us a man of God that received your call, that was obedient to your call. Even the family was obedient to your call. And they have settled and given their lives to this branch of Zion and to the community of Norristown. And Father, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. We want to give you honor and glory and praise for the guidance and the direction of Pastor and Sister West over the years, God. We do not take it for granted. There are churches closing there are people that have lost their way. But we still have a place we can call home. We still have a pastor that we can look to for a word of advice. We still have a pastor that cares for each person, each family member. I'm a witness to his love and to his tiredness being with the family all night long, praying with the family all night long when he didn't have to. And then the next morning he had to preach a funeral for another family that we love so much while comforting in my loss. I know the love of a pastor. 
I've witnessed the love of a pastor. And it's because of you, Jesus, that you gave your own, your life so that we may live. So Lord God, I thank you today. We thank you, dear God. We praise you. We honor you. This branch of Zion, Siloam Baptist Church, and those in that cyberspace, there's a man of God here that preached the unadulterated truth. So God, we thank you for everything. We love you, we honor you, we praise you, we give you glory for Pastor, for Patricia West and Candace West. Father, we ask that you will cover them with the blood of Jesus, that no hurt, harm, or danger. Father, we ask that you will meet their every need in their home and outside their home, in the community and in the church. We ask that you will continue to bless the ministry that they have brought here, that you will strengthen it, widen it, that someone who doesn't know you in the pardoning of the sins may say, what must I do to be saved? So God, we thank you. And we say hallelujah. hallelujah. And glory to your holy name. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for all you've given us. 
Thank you for this day, Lord. Thank you for Pastor. Thank you for Sister West. Thank you for Candace. Thank you for this church, Lord. Thank you for our members who are watching us via video. Thank you for all you've done for us, Lord, and for allowing us to once again come into your house of praise. And we ask for your continued blessings on the gifts and the givers in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit. 
scripture reading will be taken from the book of John. John chapter 14, we will be reading verses 12 through 17. John chapter 14. Verses 12 through 17. Truly I say to you, he that loves me and the works I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do because I go to my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, Keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever, even the Holy Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it does not see him, neither knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. After the prayer of consecration, my best friend, the Holy Spirit, will be teaching you from the subject, Holy Spirit Power. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for a revolution. A revolution, not only in this community, but all across America, all across the world, Lord God. We need a revival of your precious Holy Spirit. We need your servants to be energized that they would utilize the power that is within them. Shake us up. Stir us up, Lord God. Help us to confront evil and to defeat it, Lord God. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach in the name of Jesus the Messiah. Amen. Amen. Holy Spirit power. If you have given your life to Jesus, the Holy Spirit is your birthright. It's your inheritance. I remember April 20th, 1979. I gave my heart to the Lord. 
I was two months before my 19th birthday, a freshman at Syracuse University. Some born again believers invited me to a weekend retreat. And I went, reluctantly. I was in search for myself. Who was I supposed to be? What was I supposed to do with the life that God had given me? When I went to that retreat, I heard the word. And I decided at that moment, I wanted to be a man of God. So I asked Jesus to come into my heart. I asked him to cover me with his blood. To wipe away my sins and to write my name in the book of eternal life. When I made that decision at that moment, I felt the power of the Holy Spirit come over me and settle inside of me. It was the most wonderful experience I had ever known. Folks say I haven't been acting right since. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> That's all right. All good. Think about it. The same spirit that said, let there be light. Mm. The same spirit that said, let the earth bring forth grass mm. and the herb yielding mm. seed, mm. the fruit tree, mm. the fruit after its kind. Amen. The same spirit, the same spirit that Elijah prayed to mm. when the widow of Zarephath's son died, when he stretched his body over the boy, he said, Lord! My God, let this child's soul return to him. And the boy got up. Mm. Mm. The same spirit, same spirit that worked miracles through Jesus. The same spirit that raised him from the dead lives in you. shows us clearly that it's cultivated through time spent alone in fellowship mm -hmm. with the Lord. Remember, this is a love relationship. 
Remember how you fell in love with your sweetheart? You did everything you could to get that person's attention. And you spent time with them. You wanted to be alone with them. You wanted to be romantic with them. Well, it's the same thing with the Lord. This is a love relationship. God wants our time. God wants our treasure. He wants us to love on him. Enoch loved God. He put everything else behind him and walked with God and fellowshiped with God. And he and God had such a loving relationship, God said, come on up here and be with me. He didn't even have to die. Elijah had a loving relationship with God. He walked in Holy Spirit power. You know the story. He called down fire from heaven and burned up the sacrifice. He put the priests of Baal to death. And when Ahab went home and told his wife Jezebel, she dispatched the messenger. She said, by this time tomorrow, I'm going to kill you. And you know what the prophet did? He ran. <laughs> he ran. He ran. That story cracks me up. He ran, he ran, he ran hard too. He ran south. He ran deep south. He went all the way down south into the desert to Mount Hor. He went to the place where God gave Moses the Torah, the first five books of the Bible. He went to the place he knew he was going to be seen. Yes. That it. You will be silent in the name of Jesus. He went to the place where he knew he would be safe. I love the way scripture says, Elijah, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? God told him to go back. He said, I got work for you to do. And he restored the school of the prophets. But it was in the desert that Elijah went. It was in the desert John the Baptist lived. It was in the desert that Jesus went. It was in the desert that Paul spent two years after his conversion. Why in the desert? Because the desert is a quiet and isolated place. There's nothing there but sand and dirt and rocks. <laughs> the perfect place to cultivate your relationship with God. There's no distraction. There's no telephone. There's no internet service. There's nobody to get on your nerves. It is a place of total isolation. And you know what they discovered? Archaeologists discovered in these caves they had Huge jars filled with manuscripts. Mm -hmm. The word of God. Mm -hmm. These people went to these caves in the desert to study the word of God. To commune with him. To get close to him. To hear his voice clearly. If you want to hear from God, turn down your plate. If you want to hear from God, turn off your computer. Turn off Netflix. Turn off the soap operas. Spend quality time alone. 
time with him, with God. As you empty yourself, he pours in to you, himself. <laughs> he replaces yourself with himself, with his power, with his knowledge, with his anointing. Hallelujah. And he will tell you what he wants you to do. Turn with me to Isaiah, chapter 20. chapter 20. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 20. We'll start our reading in verse 2. At the same time, spoke the Lord by Isaiah the son of Amos, saying, Go, loose the sackcloth from off your loins, and put off the shoes from your feet. And he did so, walking naked and barefoot. And the Lord said, Like as my servant Isaiah has walked naked and barefoot three years, for a sign and a wonder unto Egypt and to Ethiopia. So shall the king of Assyria lead away the Egyptians prisoners and the Ethiopians captive, young and old, naked and barefoot, even with their buttocks uncovered to the shame of Egypt. God used this prophecy Amen. to speak to the Egyptians and to the Ethiopians. He spoke through Isaiah the prophet. Three years he spent naked. That's selfless. That's Holy Spirit power. When you begin to walk in this power, when you begin to be filled with God's anointing and he starts using you, there's a price that has to be paid. Oh yeah, there's a price that has to be paid. You know, I, I work at a hospital, as most of you know. I'm a security officer. I protect doctors and nurses. And one of the nurse, one of the doctors there I got to be really good friends with, fabulous young woman. And I said to her, just out of curiosity, I said, Doctor, has it been a major sacrifice for you to become a doctor? Her eyes went up. She said, oh yeah. Yeah. A lot of my friends went to pool parties, went to the beach, but I was preparing to be a doctor. I missed family events and relationships just to become a doctor. It took enormous sacrifice, and I had to give up so much just to become a doctor. I said to her, I said, you know what? You're a darn good doctor. And she was. It's the same in ministry. It's the same with being a child of God. If you want to walk in Holy Spirit power, you've got to make some sacrifices. You've got to give up some things, some social events, some time spent with friends. As you pour your 
yourself into God, he pours himself into you. Amen. And then things will begin to happen. Remember, the Holy Spirit confronts evil. So he's going to use you to confront evil. People will hate you. People will despise you. Remember what they said about Jesus? They said he casts out demons by the prince of demons. They called him a devil. They talked about him terrible. I told my daughter, my children, I said, look, and my sister, and my sister, I said, look, folks going to talk about me. I said, you can't let that upset you. My daughter wanted to fight. I said, no, 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 let them have their say. Let them talk. It doesn't matter. What matters is that the word is going out. Their hearts are being convicted. Let them talk. Yes. 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 Say the worst things about you, yeah. things that aren't even true. But you're walking in Holy Spirit power. Yeah. There was a time in my life that I had an incident where I walked. talk about this incident much but I'm going to talk about it now because it's relevant to this teaching. As most of you know I was a minister at Ebenezer Methodist Church and in 1997 I had just announced my calling to be a preacher. I'd done my trial sermon and I was being taught by Bishop John. Love that man. I love that man, Bishop John. He taught me so much. But I was just getting started. And I came up to the church one Saturday to pray. And there was a big old sign on the outside announcement board in front of the church. Chicken dinner sale. <laughs> and I looked at it, I was like, what? Are you kidding? Scriptures speak against this. So I said, oh well, people won't do what they want to do. And there were folks outside of the church, there were folks inside of the church on every level. This, this was a major event. And I thought to myself, my goodness, can't people read their own Bibles? You're not supposed to do these kind of things. But I went up, I said, well, somebody else will have to deal with that. So I went up stairs to pray in the sanctuary. They were having choir rehearsal. And as I prayed, the Holy Spirit spoke to me so clearly, he said, throw those people out of here. I said, what? He said, throw those people out of here. I said, Lord, I don't have the authority to do that. He said, I'm giving you the authority. He said, I don't want those people in here. Throw them out. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> and I wrestled with that for an hour. I wrestled with that for an hour. You see, the Masons were having this chicken dinner sale to benefit the youth, the younger Masons coming along in the organization. They ran that church. Most of the trustees were Masons. So they were having this event. Regardless of who wanted it or not. And the Lord 
to throw those people out. So I struggled with that for an hour, and finally, I knew I had a choice. Either do what God said, or not do it and feel bad because I disobeyed the Lord. I decided, Lord, I don't have the courage to do this. I said, but if you want it done, I give you permission to use me. As I was praying, I felt this balloon inside me just fill up. Then it popped. Boom! And the Holy Spirit was in charge. It was like being on a roller coaster. You're on it, but you don't have no control over what's happening. The choir was about to disperse, and they were arguing about who should end the meeting in prayer. The men or the women. Holy Spirit spoke. He said, I'll end this meeting. <laughs> and I went and prayed, prayed, started to pray with him. And the Holy Spirit said, I can see all this happening. Holy Spirit said, there's a foul odor of chicken in here, and it doesn't belong. It's time for war! And I broke from the prayer line, started walking back downstairs, and it sounded like the thundering hooves of horses. And I went downstairs, went up to the first table. It had juice, a big juice bowl fountain with juice coming out of it. And they had desserts all over the table. Sweet potato pies, cakes. And I went up the whole spill went up. Uh, and he flipped the uh, table. Uh, oh, uh, and all that went on the floor. <laughs> I went into the kitchen proper. And on this side, they had chicken in those big pans uh, serving. Chicken being prepared, chicken and batter, and chicken that was already fried. And the guy who was serving it was at the he was at the at the oven that was frying the chicken. And the Holy Spirit took my hand. Boom! All the chicken became airborne. Chicken flew that day. One had macaroni and cheese in it, one had collard greens, the other had string beans, I think one was potatoes. The Holy Spirit went shoo, and all that flew on the floor. It just took seconds to destroy that event, and it was destroyed. They said, Brother Bill, you're committing an act of violence. You have to leave. So I went out the back door, came around to the front. They locked the church. <laughs> Brother Ted LeBlanc, he came up to me and said, Brother Bill, I'm going to make sure you get home. <laughs> I said, Brother Ted, I live right around the corner. <laughs> he said, yeah, but I'm going to make sure you get home. Because <laughs> there's some people who want to hurt you. <laughs> so I, I went home with him and my poor mom. That phone was ringing off the hook. <laughs> It was a major scandal in Norristown. <laughs> to this day, there are people in this community who hate me. They absolutely do. They absolutely hate me. But you know what? I absolutely do not care. Holy Spirit.
Spirit power. If you want to walk in Holy Spirit power, you can do so. But be prepared because God's going to use you to confront the evilest presence in our midst. He'll give you power to do it. But there's a price that has to be paid for you to do so. People will hate you. They'll talk about you. They'll call you out your name. But that's all right. There's glory waiting for you from the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Bow your heads with me, please. Father, I thank you at this time for this word because I believe there's some warriors in this church who are going to walk in Holy Spirit power. Use them, Lord God. Bless them, Lord God. Fill them, Lord God. Create a revolution. Change the circumstances by which we live in this community, in this country, in this world. B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Jesus the Messiah. Amen. Amen. The doors of the kingdom of God are opening to you now. If you have never given your life to the Lord. You can do so at this time. Jesus is waiting with his arms open wide. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. <coughs> if you'll let me in, I will dine with you. He's got a gift for you. Holy Spirit is your inheritance. It is your birthright. Is there one? Raise your hand. Is there one? Is there one? Is there one? There may be one of you in cyberspace. We're going to pray right now that you would receive the Holy Spirit. Father, in the name of Jesus, Bless your people. Bless the one who wants to give their life to the Lord. Forgive them of their sin. Cover them with your blood. And make them a new creature in the Messiah. Make them a child of God that may live in your kingdom forever. Write their name down in the book of eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. If there's any one of you here who needs a church home, you are welcome to come and cast your lot with us. Come with us, and the Lord shall do you good. Hallelujah. At this time, we will have our communion service.
Secret devotion to serve the word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and their acquaintance, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be kind and just to those in our employ, and faithful in the service. Thank you. 
For I deliver unto you that which was delivered unto me, that on the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus did bread. After having given thanks, he broke it, and said, This is my body, yes. which is broken and given unto you. Let us eat and drink. Pull back the second cover. You can. Yes. In like manner, he took also the cup. After having blessed, he said, This is the new covenant in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us drink. The church say amen. amen. The church say amen. amen. The church say hallelujah. The Bible says they sang a hymn and went out. Let us do likewise. To go forth and to spread the good news. Jesus is alive and well. And he loves us still. May we be his witnesses to a world that stands in need of him. Let's close out with a singing of a verse of amazing grace. How sweet the sound. Can we sing that together? I don't think we need a piano, organ. We all know that song, don't we? Yes. Let's sing together. Amazing grace. How Jesus. 
Jesus first. If we are willing to labor without seeking reward, we will see God do great things. So let's keep working together. Keep praising God. Keep worshiping his holy Amen. 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 And amen. 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 The Bible says they sang a hymn and went out. Let us do likewise. We want to thank you for coming out. And we hope that your week is filled with the message that was given to you. And we want you to know that because of COVID, once again, still here, okay, the, uh, the ushers will take up your tithes and offers, offering at the door, okay? And if you could take your, your empty uh, communion cups with you and deposit them in the, in the uh, trash as you leave, please, we would really appreciate that, okay? Isaiah 41.10, let that weigh on your mind this week. God loves you. Be safe.